After taking one practice MCAT, you'll have read 30 scientific articles at about five to 700 words each and answered pointed questions covering a multitude of sciences across many disciplines. By the time you've gone through an entire structured MCAT program, you'll probably have read as many scientific passages as someone writing a dissertation. So how are you supposed to keep from drowning in all this scientific jargon and actually know it's important in an MCAT passage? I'm about to show you with a strategy called foreshadowing. I'll preface this by saying this is what we consider an advanced strategy. If you're just starting out or if you're not comfortable with other strategies like simplifying the question stem or flow charting, we recommend starting with those first. The idea behind foreshadowing is that regardless of what it feels like, the MCAT was written not by machines, but by real humans just like you and me. And in order to answer a question on the MCAT, the humans that write the MCAT have to be able to point to a specific sentence or a figure in the passage and confidently state that the testers were given enough information to answer that question quickly and correctly. This means that as long as you know the basic sciences, every single question is within your grasp. Also, the articles that are on the MCAT, excluding cars, are actual scientific articles that have just been adapted for the MCAT. You can even see the citation at the bottom of the passages. Meaning, the MCAT authors have obtained a license to be able to add information to those passages for the sole purpose of testing what they have added to the passages. So, if we can identify what they've added, then you can know the questions they're going to ask before they even ask them. But how do you know what they've added? It's, it's not highlighted with a big neon sign next to it. The MCAT has tells as to when it's adding in new material. The first hint is redundancy. With so few words per passage in the MCAT, it seems wasteful for them to say the same thing twice. So pay really close attention when they do that. Consider this example. In the first sentence or two of this passage, we're told what transamination is like four different times. Transamination is a basic science, so they really only need to tell us once that the reaction in the passage is a transamination reaction. But they said it several times. Pay close attention to times like these, and they'll usually ask a question on these redundant sentences. Hint number two, over explanation. Oftentimes the MCAT will introduce a new science, add a comma, and then explain that new science in basic science terms. They'll ask a question on that new science later, and they expect you to answer with your knowledge of the basic science that comes right after it. Here's an example. When did they ever list the chemical formula after the name of the molecule? That's weird and it's an over explanation. They ask this question later. This is not a fact that you're supposed to have memorized. Rather, the proper way to get this question correct is to compare the structures between glutamate and GABA that were given in the passage. Notice that the difference between the two is a carboxylic acid and then simplify the question as which of these enzymes can remove a carboxylic acid? That's a much easier question, and this is the power of combining strategies like simplifying the question stem and foreshadowing. The last hint is interruptions. These are random sentences the AAMC isn't even trying to hide as testable. They come out of nowhere and they have little to do with the sentences that come before and after them. This passage was all about transamination of amino acids, very orgo heavy. Then at the end they put this little gem in there. It makes no sense where it is, and the authors clearly put that in there because they have to hit a quota on thermodynamics questions. They do ask a question about this later. Foreshadowing isn't necessary, but it's pretty cool. It's an advanced strategy that helps you get in the minds of the authors of the MCAT, and it takes this test from scary and confusing to kind of predictable. It also helps you skim down your flow charts to things that you predict will be tested. Practice foreshadowing the next time you take a passage. Just make a note of when you're, you think that you're seeing it in the passage, and then see if they ask a question on that topic later. For mature test takers, this can be a game changer. As always, thank you for watching. Let us know what you think about this strategy down in the comments, and hit like and subscribe. See you next time.